Hello, everyone, and welcome as we gather on Zoom for our Advent Lessons and Carols service. We're going to begin with the lighting of the Advent wreath at the church, which Aaron is going to assist with. We're going to have a moment of prayer to begin this service. We light this candle as a symbol of the hope we have in the promise of the Lord's coming. For the Lord will fulfill his promise to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. A righteous branch will spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Lord Jesus, come soon. Aaron, will you please light the Advent wreath? Yes, thank you, Matthew. And as we have a moment of silence, we will listen to the music, People Look East. People Look East, the time is near. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the heart and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Girls be glad the earth is bare. One more seed is planted there. Give you up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today, love the roses on the way. Birds, though you long have ceased to build, God the nest that must be filled. Even the hour when wings are frozen, God for fledgling time has chosen. People look east and sing today, love the bird is on the way. Stars keep the watch when night is dim, one more light the bowl shall brim. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today, love the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming, with the word the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way. A bidding for Advent. My sisters and brothers in Christ, in these days of shadow and of hope, let it be our duty and delight to listen to the story of our faith. And hear again the prophet's words of blessing and doom. And as we prepare to celebrate again the birth of Jesus Christ as a baby, let us remember that he also comes to judge the just and the unjust and to establish the reign of equity and peace. As we hear the reading of God's holy word, let us respond to the call to prepare the way of the Lord. Hear Micah's call to justice, kindness, and a humble walk with God. Receive with joy the promise of the coming of the one who will judge with righteousness and equity. Let us remember that the Lord of glory experienced the pain of life and death, and pray for the sick, the poor, the oppressed, the anxious, the weary, and the bereaved. And remembering the promise that he shall reign forever and ever, let us pray for the rulers of the nations, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church, 
that we may be a sign of the age to come, with longing in our hearts for God's reign of peace, let us hear again the story of Christ's coming and join with Mary and Joseph and all our forebears in faith in offering our worship. Let us have a moment of silence. And we will ask Joan Loomis to have the first reading. The first reading this morning is by Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places as a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get up. To the, to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear, says the, said, say to the cities of Judah. Here is your God. The Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is, is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. The prayer, God, our hope, hear again the cry of exiles. Imprisoned in dark land of war, hunger, and intolerance. Come among us with strength and healing and bring us back to the world of your trust and holy purpose. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us listen to the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice. 
joy Emmanuel shall come to us oh Israel oh come O rod of Jesse stand from every foe deliver them let us your mighty power to save and give them victory o'er the grave Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to us, O Israel. O come, O key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O day spring from on high, and cheer us by your dawning time. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of humankind. O bid our bitter conflict cease. And be for us the Prince of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O And now we will have a reading from Tom Lumos. The second reading is from Jeremiah 31 verse 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, the Lord saith. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forget their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And together the prayer. God of new beginnings, write your hearts within, write your law within our hearts, that we may love as freely as we think and breathe and serve as naturally as children play. Make us heralds of your new creation, made known to us in Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we will have a moment of silence. Our third reading will be read by Margaret Williams. The third reading is from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. And when fire, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries 
so that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. The word of the Lord. O oh, just judge of all the world, when the dark power of evil threatens your creation, may we, through your strength within us, maintain the sure knowledge of your love and mercy, which we see in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Prepare the Way, O Zion. Our next reading, the fourth reading, will be read by Cheryl Campbell. The fourth reading is taken from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. The prayer, God of small beginnings, you bring strength out of weakness and hope out of fear. By the power of your spirit, make us your children. 
followers and partners in the grand design of your kingdom of love, rooted and revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now a moment of silence. And now our fifth reading will be read by Katie Sponnable. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Thanks be to God. And the prayer. God of our longing, we cannot earn the wholeness we desire nor win your healing grace by offering back the bounty we receive. Give us, we pray, hearts to learn your will and wills to do your pleasure in works of justice and of peace. We ask this in his name, Jesus Christ the Lord, amen. And now we're going to have a musical selection, some instrumental music from the Heartland family. Our sixth reading will be read by Doug Lake. A reading from the book of Isaiah. A shoot shall come up his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf will live with the lamb, 
The leopard shall shy, lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the roll of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. And together the prayer, God our salvation, who by water and the Holy Spirit delivered us from sin and raised us to the new life of grace. Give us an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Uh Aaron, our music director, your volume has dropped down. I don't know if you can turn it up on the laptop there, but our next hymn will be O Come Divine Messiah. And that, for those who are following at home, it's hymn number 95 in the blue hymnal, O Come Divine Messiah. And our seventh reading will be done by Lynn Fitzmorris. A reading from Luke. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and the regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as a priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the customs of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people were praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of the incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. 
even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people to Israel, to their Lord God. And with the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before them to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zachariah said to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. And the angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zachariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done to me when he looked favorably upon me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The word of the Lord. Almighty God, you called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your son and to prepare his way. Give your people wisdom to see your purpose and openness to heal that we too may witness Christ coming so prepare his way through your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the heart one God now and forever and now a moment of silence for the dead. Our eighth reading will be read by Peggy Wilson. A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. And together the prayer. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our next hymn will be, There's a Voice in the Wilderness Crying. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, A call from the ways on trod, Preparing the deserts a highway, A highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places where the Lord our God may go. O Zion, give voice to good tidings, ascend to the heights and sing. Proclaim to a desolate people the coming of their King. 
the works of pride all perish, like flowers they shall decay. The power and pomp of nations shall pass like a dream away. But your word, O oh God, is faithful. Your arm, O oh Lord, is strong. You stand in the midst of nations. You will your right or wrong. You will feed your flock like a shepherd and fold the lambs to your bed. In pastures of peace you lead them and give to the weary rest. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places where the Lord our God may go. And our next reading is going to be from the Gospel of John. And this is a particularly special reading this year. A few weeks ago, we had the death of one of our friends, David Parsons, who was a warden in the church, a licensed lay minister, a Eucharistic minister, and a choir member. And he was the one who assigned readings. And for this Advent Lessons and Carol service, he always made sure he kept this reading for himself. And when we were preparing the readings, we were short one reader for this, the ninth reading. And so in a moment that kind of gave me chills, I had the inspiration of calling David's son, Greg, and asking him to do the reading this year. And I am delighted to say that Greg said yes, and I think courageously said yes. And so we will ask Greg Parsons to read the ninth reading. Reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to, want, he came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. A reading from the book of John. Thanks be to God. And together a prayer, eternal wisdom, creating, ordering, and saving, we give thanks that we have seen you in the selfless love of Jesus Christ. Now reign with our minds and hearts and mobilize our wills that by your power and through our hands, this world may be remade to be the garden and the city of your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we will ask the Hartlings to offer a musical reflection. <laughs>
ask Jacqueline Kitty to lead us in the prayers. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we have been asked to pray the minute for the ministry of the parish of Amherst and the parish retired clergy and widows of clergy of the South Shore region. And we pray for Bishop elect Sandra Fife as she prepares for her consecration on November 30th. And in our prayers of intercession, let us pray to the Lord saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And your response is, your mercy is great. We come to you this day, O God, with a deepening anticipation of your birth among us. We thank you for the gift of your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the church throughout the world and for all the ministries that build up the body of Christ in our many vocations, we may serve to your glory. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for this nation and for all nations, remembering especially those who are victims of political and social injustice. We pray for elected officials and all leaders that they will govern with courage and equity. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for the sick, the destitute, and the dying, for strangers in our land, for the invisible ones, for the elderly and children, for parents and grandparents, for those who live alone and those who live lonely in the midst of family. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Our prayers are bid this morning for Adam, Audrey, Bernie, Catherine, Charlene, Chris, Hillary, Jason, Joan, Judy, Jack and Marie, Laura, Lisa, Marilyn, Ron, Sarah, Sue, Vi, and for all those we name now, both aloud and in the silence of our hearts. <clears throat> We hold before God all those who carry burdens unknown to us, for those we have forgotten to pray for, and for those who have no one to pray for them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We remember with mercy those who sleep without shelter, cold and vulnerable, lacking enough food, those who are overworked and those who have no work. Stir up in us the capacity to see ourselves in their struggle and to act so that others may have life abundant. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this community, for our neighbors and friends, and for those with whom we study and work. Guide and strengthen all people in our common life to know the gifts of your grace and love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the saints who have gone before us, especially St. Luke, asking that our gratitude for their witness be apparent in all that we do. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. May all that we ask and all that you see is needed in our world be given to your people through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. In our collect for this morning, almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty be with us all and remain with us all, always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. Thank you all for joining us in this service of music and lessons to kick off this Advent season. It is a rather ambitious service to try uh, to come back onto Zoom and do it for you this way. Um, but overall, other than the live streaming, I think everything went well. Please look for future liturgies on Wednesdays and Sundays to be uploaded on both our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. We usually share the link on the group as well. So please know there are a few announcements this week. Uh, if you know of anyone in our parish who is not receiving our emails and would like to, please get in touch with the parish office and, and get them to leave their uh, email address on a phone message or with our administrator and we can add them to the list. We want everyone to be up to date on all the different happenings that are going on during these COVID restrictions. We received a thank you from Marge Bootlier, who looks after the Feeding Others of Dartmouth mission of our parish, and she collects meatballs and wants to thank everyone who was contributing to the last delivery. And if anyone is interested in being on our list, uh, you can contact the parish office and we will put you in touch with Marge and she can uh, help you with that as well. 
Uh, other than that, I do want to thank everyone who was part of our tree lighting ceremony. It was fun. A uh, special thank you to Aaron, our music director, because he made all the difference. Uh, having only five people allowed to gather, uh, he made up for the lack of a crowd. And so thank you so much, Aaron, for your joy and your enthusiasm. And for my family, especially the littlest ones who added their own energy to the event. Uh, thank you also to all those who donated and make it a huge success when we have the final numbers we'll be in touch to let you know how the fundraiser did. Uh, other than that, please continue to watch for updates as we continue to change, or the new um, keyword now seems to be pivot in order to meet the uh, pandemic requirements, but I think we all understand that we're sacrificing our own personal liberties and freedoms for the betterment of the whole. So please continue to be careful, to love one another, kind to one another, even when we're all under additional stress. So we're going to sign off now, and I wish you all a very happy Advent. Thank you.